But where are you? Let's move to, say, 45. Where are you? What have you achieved? Who's with you? Who's helped you? How are you sharing this success? You will have not achieved it alone. Now, you might think of material things, but they are just rewards if you choose to take them. And you should. Think more about your sense of place. Think of the effort, the leadership, what sacrifice and pain you are prepared to, for to achieve this. Now let's work back fast to say 25. Where do you want to be? Now quickly try to work out what action you have to take to get there. Metaphorically, who are you going to swim with? Because that sets the scene and the pace. Swim with the dolphins and you will be one. Swim with the sharks and you will become one. You will adapt their habits. So working back, to, back today, so age 17, 18, what questions are you asking? What actions are you taking to ensure you will reach your goal? Whatever the world throws at you, and there will be setbacks in life, it is the attitude that you choose that will make the difference. Not your mentors, not your parents or guardians, although they are important. It is your attitude. Every day, wake up in the shower, take a deep breath and envisage the day. If you're a sports person, you will practice to improve. Every day, concentrate on the details that others ignore. You, you imagine scoring a goal, a try, a point, becoming a leader in your field, an entrepreneur. My advice is visualize every day, plan before you execute, Dare to dream big, shoot for the moon, and let's hope most of you achieve the stars. Dare to be different. Good night. Fine. That's me. No, it isn't. Good evening. I'm Gavin. Who would have thought? Hey, Keith. Woodard, 77. But before I get asked to leave, can I thank you for coming out this evening and giving me your valuable time when you could be in prep or independent learning, as I believe they call it now, or doing something more interesting. Now in life, we normally trade our time usually for money. That is why we learn to, to, to do a perfect skill. Tonight I have the responsibility not to trade time for money, although that would be nice, but your time for my inspiration, and that is a responsibility I take seriously. I also realise that some of you will be lucky and have decided your career direction. Some of you may be super lucky and have an unconditional, has anybody got an unconditional? In the Scottish system, you can have an unconditional. It's unbelievable. Or maybe you're about to embark on, on an apprenticeship. <coughs> or maybe you're already running a business from your study. Speak to me later. <laughs> Even if this is the case, stay with me, because my life is not normal, and neither was my journey, as Keith will testify. And it, oh, sorry, Mr Shuttleworth, sir. And if you can trust me, I will do my best to return that trust. During my chat, I hope to prove that tourism is everyone's business, and while you might think it's not for you, you may be linked to it by default. So, with your permission, I have roughly 30 minutes, or less than one minute for every year since I joined the Ellesmere family in 77. I will tell you a little about myself, then I will give you a little overview about tourism and the hospitality business, and after that I will give you a very fast overview of what I actually did. Some, some advice on how I, I would approach it today and what to look for when I interview people and then some Q&A so we can really flesh out the fun bits. After that you'll get my reading list. So how do we feel? Now we do need a little bit of, we're feeling good Gavin please. Are you ready for this? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic, great. <laughs> it's going to be fast, it's going to be furious. I am Gavin Nurse. When I was here at Ellesmere I travelled down from the Isle of Mull a little place on the west coast of Scotland. Uh, today I travelled down from Inverness, which is 27 miles east of Inverness and northwest of Aberdeen. I'm married to Penny, and I have two boys, Hamish, nearly 20, who is reading law, uh, sorry, I wish he was reading law, he's reading business, a, a, a third year, and he's a third year at QMU Edinburgh. 
and Lockie, 18, who's just started at the Glasgow School of Art. And he's studying, let me get this right, he's studying interior architecture and environmental design. So that's my team. I, ha I have a young adults like you. I think it's fair to say, while I enjoyed my time here, the academic side of the equation was a challenge. Yeah, we've got an agreement over it. And it's my intention to show you what, what, the found, what, found, what the foundations put in place here have stood the test of time and allowed me to flourish. Did I tell you that you're listening for prizes? Sorry, I couldn't bring whiskey. I know my billing tonight is the diary of an innkeeper, and you'll get the framework of that. My real diary has to be kept until after the watershed. It is partially funny, funny and invariably involves alcohol, sex and chefs, <laughs> which is not a great mix. The tourism and hospitality industry is made up of many components, and all are critically interlinked. So let's consider some numbers. Now, I didn't do numbers here at college, but we were lucky, we we're lucky in the real world, there are many people who do, and you can ask them if you don't understand. So how much is global tourism worth? How much is global tourism worth? Global tourism. We're talking trillions. US. Give me a number. $40 trillion. That would be big. It's a little less than that. It 13. is, do we have another guess? 13. 13. 13, no. 20. Well, when we think that the whole global, European global <coughs> bailout in Europe, sorry, was 12 trillion Seven. US. Yeah, you're getting more like it. Um, so we're looking. Uh, shouldn't have stopped, should I? We're looking at 7.6. 7.6 trillion in US dollars. The most recent data available from 2015 proves that travel and tourism is one of the world's largest. And it is, as I like to say, the world's Heineken industry. It reaches parts of the world that others don't or can't. But this big number means little to us. So let's try and digest it. The direct economic impact of the industry that is, a, that is accommodation, transportation, entertainment, and attractions is worth approximately 2.36 trillion US dollars. Still a big number. For Great Britain, France, Italy, and the US, it is important. But let's consider where the opportunity might lie. Other countries are growing at pace, and this is where I would look for opportunity. For instance, Namibia is growing at 9.1% per year. That's fast. China grew at 7.3%. That is also very fast. So the UK, our growth rate isn't so great, but it makes up 2.4% of our GDP, GDP, or of the cake, as I like. So out of the entire UK economy, in the cake, it's 2.4%, which is still big. So let's consider other destinations. Malta, it's 13.6. Mr. Greg, Ivan Greg will be very happy with that. In Barbados, I quite like Barbados, it would be 10.9. And in Greece, it's 6.5. But to some of the other islands, it's well over, and some of the Greek islands, it's well over 50%. So imagine how critical it is to our economy and why Greece is just making sure we go on holiday there. So what do we learn from this? Well, we learn it's very important, it's vast, and it's growing. A good thing to consider when you're considering a career, I would suggest. So let's consider some of the components before we drill down to the humble innkeeper that is me, that make up the travel industry. There's airliners. There's cruise liners, there's travel agents, there's ground handlers, there's train operators, there's hotel operating companies. Attractions such as Disney and Alton Towers, or heritage attractions like, or such as Edinburgh Castle, the Tower of London, or even the canal here in Ellesmere. So the travel and tourism industry is all around us, and we probably don't realise it as we go around our daily business. 
So how can we understand that industry that is big and multifaceted and hugely important in social and economic terms? So in bearing in this mind, and time is valuable, let's consider the hotel sector. Globally, there are some very big players, and they are funded by sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, stock stocks and shares, and wealthy individuals. But why? For years, we failed as an industry to get the money we needed. If you look into the future, get back in your time machine, look into the future, what industry can you predict will be around and has been around since Mary and Joseph asked for a room in the inn? High streets changing, banking's changing, the high streets in turmoil, banking's in flux and all sorts of challenges and disruptors are in the sector. We have our disruptors, such as Airbnb. Who's heard of Airbnb? Who's used Airbnb? There you go. But I would hazard a good wager, in my language, a good dram, that the hotel sector will still be around in 50 years' time. But it will evolve and it will change. But, the, but with humans' desire to travel, discover and impress... And it's endemic... And that's good for us. So let me go off piste for a few minutes. That was bound to happen. Given that we cannot anticipate what the economy will look like by the end of the week, or even in the last 24 hours, the pounds plummeted against the dollar, the stock market shot through the roof. Only eight weeks ago it was doing other things. And given the unpredictability of the last eight years, and the as the last few months testify over Brexit, never mind what the US elections <coughs> are going to throw up, it is important that the money people put their money where they anticipate it might be safe. And my colleague and of my year, Ross Jobber, will probably talk about that when he comes in a few weeks' time. But you guys are living in an intensely stimulating period in the history of the Earth. Don't underestimate that st statement. You guys are in living in an intensely stimulating period. There are lots of distractions from social medias to computers, general medias and, po and political noise, and it is very easy to be distracted. The successful will concentrate. It is fair to say that your career path will be very different to what most of us have experienced in the last hundred years. Jamara, Marriott, Starwood, some very interesting things going on there. But just last week, Marriott completed the takeover of Starwood Hotels. It was a deal of some 13.6 billion US dollars. And that was just for the value of Starwood at the end, not the property as they are almost all managed on behalf of what we call propcos, or property companies. God, we're now just working in billions. We were in trillions, we're now in billions. For a second, let's imagine the advisors that have worked on this big deal of 13.6 billion US dollars. Imagine their fees at 2%. Just let's say it's a lot of money. Imagine all the tech support that will be required to integrate these large assets. So globally, we have some pretty impressive hotel companies. Often they are trophy assets owned by high net worth individuals, such as the Ritz in London, London owned by the Barclay Brothers, who also happen to own the Telegraph and a few other things. <laughs> Meanwhile, the very serious game of Monopoly continues. For me, the game is simple. Never run out of cash. That is the main reason of Monopoly. And remember to have the courage to go large when others are dithering. So that was a very look at, look at the global picture. Imagine the opportunity. The opportunity you can grasp, any single one of you. So my advice to you is follow your dream. Stay focused. If you choose tourism and hospitality, probably do a business degree. Yeah. Um, the best one for hotel keeping would be in The Hague, but it doesn't really matter as long as you go to a damn good university. There's one, funnily enough, called The Edge down in Essex. And 
any hotel school in Switzerland if you can get there. Okay? So that's the, that's the academic bit in a bag. My other strong thing is earn and learn. Anybody who comes to an interview to me who hasn't been working and they're thinking about going into the hotel industry or whatever and hasn't been working will not get past interview. I am expecting to see you get your job profile from the age of 16 all the way through to the end of university or having experiences. Okay? And the one thing I've noticed this year with my school, the, the kids I know of your age group, is there's a lot less doing uh, gap years at the moment. And please remember, while you might think you are important and God's gift, so does everyone else. Just a word, I'll be honest, life does not always go to plan. Recessions come and go, and more important, your family comes along, and that event will show up, throw up challenges. Your partner will become ill. One of you will become ill. Be ready for that. Some of you will, 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 will suffer changes and use the skills that you've learned here to get through it, because this is where I learned the skills. Be enough, brave enough to change because of circumstance. Be bold enough to use the skills to ensure that your principle and moral goals are maintained. Monitor your individual performance when you leave. There will be lots of people ready to uh, create opportunities at your expense from the get-go, be it in a job or at uni. Create teams of great people around you. Be aware of those people and ensure they share your values. Continue to reach and extend your own abilities. Continue to challenge them until the day you die. Continue to learn every day. Ask this question, what am I learning from those around me? Seek and discover strengths you did not know you had. Importantly, help others who may not have had the same opportunity as you. Help them find their strengths. I will be ruthless, this creates loyalty. Have confidence with others, consideration for others, never arrogance. Every day make a difference, be prepared. Education and life as a leader, entrepreneur is intense. The case method is not a sport for spectators. It is a sport that demands that you are active, direct engagement. You must learn to speak one part of the equation, but listening is even more important. Be open to changing your point of view. God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. You wouldn't think that at the moment. You have studied in a place where the power you exercise in life will increase over time. Be careful to ensure to keep your moral compass, that you don't lose your way. Use your judgment in any given situation. That is what business is. That is what real life will demand of you. People will see you as a leader, experience you as a leader. It is because they anticipate you will have better judgment. Be that leader, be that entrepreneur. Don't let them down. Operate from a place of empathy, curiosity and humility. And be prepared for the strong to be strong and dogmatic in times of change. You are part of a global community that has to face many challenges over the next few decades. You are part of the Ellesmere community that will influence that change if you choose to take the challenge. You have my permission. Thank you.